Hey, welcome to a new video. Are you fascinated by insects that once roamed our Earth? Nowadays, most people already dislike regular insects, but can you imagine what they looked like in the past? Some of the insects that lived back then were much larger and also quite dangerous. Today we'll show you the 20 most dangerous insects that you're glad are extinct. Are you new to this channel? Make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell. And before we start, also like the video. Number 20. Anomalocaris was a large invertebrate that could reach a length of up to almost 16 inches or 40 centimeters, excluding its front appendages and tail fin. This insect lived about 500 million years ago, during the Cambrian period. It had a pair of large compound eyes and swimming flaps along its body. The Anomalocaris was one of the largest predators of its time and had a very unusual way of catching its prey. Its front appendages had spiky hooks and were used to grasp prey. After grabbing the prey, it would be brought to the creature's sharp toothed circular mouth to be crushed. Scientists believe this insect was an active hunter. Initially, Anomalocaris fossils were incorrectly identified as belonging to three separate creatures. However, this insect had a unique way of moving, using its swimming flaps to propel itself through the water in a snake-like manner. Anomalocaris was one of the largest animals of the Cambrian and is believed to have been a top predator. Despite its frightening appearance and predatory lifestyle, the Anomalocaris was not invincible, as it was hunted by similar species. Number 19. The Gigatitan was a huge insect that lived during the Permian era, which took place 298 to 252 million years ago. This period was marked by some of the most dramatic changes in Earth's history, including the formation of the supercontinent Pangaea. There was also a mass extinction at the end of Permian, with about 96% of marine species and 70% of terrestrial species dying out. The Gigatitan was a predatory extinct insect with a wingspan of 28 inches or 71 centimeters. Additionally, it had large wings that were covered with a network of veins, which provided support and strength for flight. These wings were attached to a sturdy muscular thorax, which also housed the insect's powerful legs. An interesting fact about the Giga Titan is that it wasn't a true dragonfly, but belonged to a group of insects known as Megarid flies. These insects were some of the largest and most ruthless predators of the Permian era, capable of capturing and eating other insects, as well as small reptiles and amphibians. Imagine how terrifying it would have been if humans had lived during this period. Number 18. The Megaloraptus was one of the earliest known predatory anthropods and played a crucial role in shaping early marine ecosystems. The Megaloraptus was a sea scorpion that lived during the Silurian era, around 430 million years ago. It was a kind of aquatic predator that would have lived in a shallow sea and reef environment. It was also one of the largest anthropods of its time, with a body length of up to 40 inches or 1 meter. In addition to its long body, it had a pair of large claws at the front, which it used to capture and crush its prey. It also had long, thin legs, which allowed it to move through the water. However, its body was covered with a hard external skeleton that provided protection and support. One of the most interesting features of the Megaloraptus was its respiratory system. Instead of gills, it absorbed oxygen from the water through small plate-like structures on its external skeleton. Number 17. The Titanomi Arme, better known as the giant ant, was a prehistoric ant that lived during the Ison Epoche, around 34 to 56 million years ago. The Titanomi Arme was one of the largest ants that ever existed, with a body length of up to 2 inches or 5 centimeters. It's believed to have been a top predator in its ecosystem, hunting other insects and even small vertebrates. There were two types of Titanomi Arme. Titanomi arme gigante and Titanomi arme similima. However, the Titanomi arme gigante was larger and more aggressive. The giant ant also had a distinctive jaw structure that served to easily capture prey. And scientists think it also had a venomous sting. The size of this ant is believed to be linked to the concentration of oxygen in the atmosphere during the Isani Posh. At that time, oxygen levels were higher than they are now, which possibly enabled insects to reach larger sizes. Despite its size, it was still an efficient and cooperative member of its colony. It's believed to have functioned much like modern ants, with a clear division of labor. Can you imagine thousands of ants the size of this coming at you? Quite a creepy thought. Number 16. Initially, when the Megarachne was found, it was thought to be a giant spider, but later studies revealed that it was a sea scorpion known as a Eurypterid. 
Eurytorids are an extinct group of aquatic anthropods that lived during the Paleozoic era, which extended from 541 to 251 million years ago. The species of Megarachne was first discovered in the 1980s, based on a fossilized imprint found in Argentina. Since then, further research has been conducted to better understand this fascinating creature. It's believed to have lived in shallow seas, and used its powerful claws to capture and kill prey. One of the most notable features of the Megarachne, however, was its size. Initially, it was thought that its legs spanned an estimated 13 feet or 4 meters. However, the estimate was later challenged by scientists, with some suggesting it was smaller. Despite its smaller size, the Megarachne is still an important species to study, as it provides insights into the evolutionary history of anthropods. Namely, the Megarachne and other Eurypterids belong to the earliest anthropods that evolved. Number 15. The Dinocroton Draculae, also known as Dracula, is a giant extinct tick that lived during the Cretaceous period, about 99 million years ago. It was first identified in 2014 when a fossil was found in a piece of amber, allowing the tick to be preserved in exceptional detail. The species was named Dracula due to its long pointed mouth parts, which resemble the fangs of the famous vampire. Like modern ticks, the Dinocroton Draculae feed on the blood of other animals. While it's not exactly clear which animal this specific species preyed upon, it's thought that it possibly targeted dinosaurs as feathers from a dinosaur were found in the same amber specimen as the tick. What makes this tick so interesting, however, are its unusual mouth parts. Unlike modern ticks, which have knife-like mouth parts to cut into the skin, the Dinocroton Draculae had long, barb-like structures, with which it pierced the skin of its prey. This suggests that the tick might have had a different method of latching onto its host than the modern ticks do. Number 14. Manipulator modificaputus is an extinct species of cockroach that lived during the Cretaceous period, about 100 million years ago. One of the most notable characteristics of this species is its elongated forelegs, which were likely used to grasp and manipulate objects, hence the name manipulator. This unique adaptation is different from what we see in living cockroach species and suggests a highly specialized lifestyle. Based on morphology, scientists believe that this cockroach possibly lived in a challenging environment, with many obstacles and vegetation. Another unique feature of this cockroach species is a modification to its hind leg, which is likely used as a sensory antenna, providing the cockroach with additional info about its surroundings. This modification is not seen in any other known cockroach species. Therefore, the discovery of this cockroach provides valuable insights into the evolutionary history and the adaptations that enable these insects to survive in diverse environments for millions of years. As cockroaches are such successful and resilient organisms, it may also tell us more about the natural history of the planet. Number 13. The Meganeropsis permiana was one of the largest insects that ever lived, with a wingspan of more than 27 inches or 70 centimeters. In comparison, the largest wingspan of a living dragonfly is only about 7.5 inches or 19 centimeters. This prehistoric species lived during the Permian period, about 275 million years ago. They likely fed on small insects and small vertebrate animals, using their sharp jaws to grab their prey. They probably also used their impressive size and strength to ward off potential predators. The Meganeropsis was adapted for flight, with large, transparent wings and a relatively lightweight body. However, their size may have made flying a challenge, and scientists suspect that they might have had to rely on gliding to stay in the air for extended times. Like many other species, this insect eventually went extinct about 252 million years ago, during the Permian-Triassic extinction event. The Permian-Triassic was the most severe extinction event in Earth's history, with over 90% of all marine species and more than 70% of all vertebrate animal species disappearing. These dragonflies lived during the period when the first mammals and the first dinosaurs were evolving. Could you imagine what it would have been like to see these giant dragonflies flying over your head? Number 12. The Mongol Arachne were some of the largest spiders that ever existed, with a leg span of up to 6 inches or 15 centimeters. In comparison, the average spider today has a leg span of only a few inches or centimeters. This colossal spider sprawled the Earth during the Jurassic period, around 165 million years ago. The Jurassic period was a time of significant evolutionary innovation, during which many new species of plants and animals evolved. The Mongol Arachne was just one example of this incredible diversity of life that existed at the time. 
It turns out these spiders were predators, likely feeding on small vertebrate animals and other insects. Their large size and strength made them fierce hunters, capable of taking down prey much larger than themselves. Scientists believe that the Mongol Arachne lived in burrows that were possibly up to nearly 3 feet or 1 meter deep. These burrows may have served as a protection and refuge from other predators in harsh environmental conditions. If you're already afraid of spiders, you'll probably be very glad that this spider species is extinct, huh? Number 11. The Optinoporisus burmanicus is a genus of extinct wasps that contains eight known species, and it's the only genus in the family of Optinoporisidae. The wasps in this genus stand out for their unique appearance, which is compared to the combination of an ant, a grasshopper, and a wasp. Thanks to one specimen that was remarkably well preserved, scientists were able to study the wasp in detail. The remarkable fossil showed a well preserved head, but due to the preservation process, the abdomen was flattened. The wasp is thought to have a slender body with a distinctive neck-like structure. The head was elongated and had a large compound eye, antenna, and strong jaws. The wings are clear with visible veins and small hairs, and the legs were long and slender, resembling those of a grasshopper. The specimen found was a female. It's a wingless wasp, but it's believed that the species lost its wings due to dense vegetation in the surrounding environment. Number 10. Trilobites were among the first animals to develop eyes, with some species possessing very complex and advanced visual systems. They belonged to the earliest known anthropods and ruled the shallow waters to the fast depths of the ocean. Trilobites lived in the early Cambrian to the end of the Permian, approximately 520 to 251 million years ago. They were incredibly diverse, with over 20,000 different species known from the fossil record. Their bodies were divided into three main parts, the head, thorax, and tailpiece, with distinctive legs attached to the thorax. Despite their diversity and success over millions of years, they died out around the same time as the dinosaurs. Can you believe there were so many scary and large insects on Earth back then? Let me know in those comments. Number 9. Parapuzosa separandensis is an extinct species of ammonite that lived during the late Cretaceous period, approximately 83 to 71 million years ago. It inhabited the marine environments of what is now Westphalia, Germany. It's the largest known species of ammonite, with a shell that could reach up to 4 feet, or 1.2 meters in diameter, and weigh over 220 pounds, or 100 kilograms. However, it's unclear whether the ammonite was a fast swimmer or mainly lived in the seabed. The exact size is a matter of debate, as many specimens are incomplete or damaged. But scientists agree that there were no larger ammonites than this one. The name ammonite comes from the spiral shape of the animal's shell, which is thought to resemble the horns of an ancient Egyptian god, Amon. These distinctive spirals of ammonite shells have been used as a symbol for the interconnectivity of everything. Number 8. Arthropleura is the largest millipede that ever lived and could reach an incredible length of 8.5 feet or 2.6 meters long. This animal was found in the coal swamps in Scotland and North America and lived during the late Carboniferous period, about 300 million years ago. The Arthropleura was a herbivore and fed on plants and other plant material it could find in wooded areas. It likely used its powerful jaws to grind tough plant material, similar to herbivorous insects such as grasshoppers and beetles today. Despite its impressive size, the Arthropleura was not a predator and probably posed no threat to other larger animals. Its main defense mechanism was probably its sturdy external skeleton, which provided protection against predators and environmental hazards. The extinction of the Arthropleura is still a topic of debate among scientists. Some believe that changes in climate and vegetation patterns during the late Carboniferous contributed to its demise, while others suggest that more complex ecosystems and the evolution of new apex predators in the area played a role. Number 7. Radiodonts like Camberbroster are often called sea monsters due to their unusual and bizarre appearance. Camberbroster is an extinct genus of herded radiodonts that lived during the Middle Cambrian approximately 505 to 510 million years ago. This unique insect is a monotypic genus, meaning it's the only known species within the genus. The name Camberbroster is derived from the characteristic claws of the animal, which consisted of a series of parallel protrusions. These sharp claws were used to capture food and may have been adapted to the intricate ecosystems of the oceans. 
The marine creature belonged to a diverse group of anthropods that were once among the most dominant and successful predators in the oceans. They were also known for their bizarre and highly often specialized anatomical features, such as their complex spiny spines and multi-segmented limbs. Despite their intimidating appearance, some species preyed only on small animals and plankton, while others scavenged carcasses or engaged in filter feeding. Number 6. Campanile Gigantium is an exceptionally large fossil sea snail that lived in the oceans during the Essene Epoch. The shells of these sea snails are often found in rock layers that also contain fossils of other ancient animals, providing important clues about the ecology of the oceans millions of years ago. It's believed that these sea snails lived on Earth 56 to 34 million years ago. They belong to the family of Campanilidae, a group of marine mollusks known for their distinctive, elongated shells. This sea snail was remarkable for its size, with its shell reaching lengths of 4 feet or 120 centimeters, making it one of the largest species of mollusks to have ever lived. However, other animals had to be cautious around this creature, as its shells had a sharp pointed tip and a series of fine rib-like ridges. Campanile Gigantium is primarily found in the Paris Basin in France, where it lived in shallow marine waters. Like other members of its family, it likely fed on small organisms, such as plankton and other microorganisms. Number 5. Ecolopterus is an extinct aquatic anthropod that was predatory and lived in our oceans over 400 million years ago. This species was first described in 1914 by a German geologist named Otto Eichel. These creatures are known as sea scorpions, although they are not true scorpions. The largest species of Eucalopterus is believed to have grown up to 8 feet 4 inches, or 2.5 meters long, making it one of the largest anthropods in the history of the Earth. Despite its large size, Eucalopterus was a fast swimmer, and likely capable of swiftly pursuing and capturing its prey. It had a long segmented body with a pair of large, pincer-like claws at the front. Like other sea scorpions, it was a powerful predator, and prey such as fish and other aquatic animals stood no chance. Fossils of this creature have been found in various parts of the world, including Europe, North America, and South America. Scientists believe that it played an important role as a top predator and contributed significantly to the evolution of other species. Number 4. Paleodictyoptera was a group of large extinct flying insects that were abundant approximately 300 million years ago. These insects were characterized by their broad, flat wings, spanning several inches, or centimeters, and supported by a network of veins. The most well-known Paleodictyoptera belonged to the family Megacecoptera, which included some of the largest insects ever known. These insects had wingspans that could reach over 20 inches, or 50 centimeters. They were likely opportunistic feeders, consuming a variety of plant material, insects, and other small animals. Their wings would have enabled them to glide over long distances and make rapid turns, making them agile hunters. Paleodictyoptera has also been a significant source of information about the evolution of wings and insects. Their wings differ in several ways from that of modern insects, including their shape, the way they are supported, and how they stabilize the wings during flight. Like other insects, they eventually went extinct, about 300 to 250 million years ago. The exact cause of their extinction is unknown, but it's thought to have been caused by a combination of factors. Number 3. Opabania regalis was first described by Charles Doolittle Walcott in 1912. He considered this creature to be the most primitive of all anthropods, due to its unusual anatomy and the absence of certain anthropod-like features. This creature lived during the Cambrian period, approximately 508 million years ago. Opabania regalis was found in the Burgess Shale, a rich deposit of well-preserved fossils in British Columbia, Canada. It was a small marine animal, reaching a length of up to almost 3 inches, or 7 centimeters. Two of its eyes were attached to stalks, while the third pair wasn't. It also had a distinctive body shape with a long body and five pairs of swimming flaps on the underside. The most remarkable feature was a long flexical proboscis that extended from the front of the body and ended in a grasping claw. It had no trouble seizing small prey, such as worms or other invertebrates, from the seafloor. The swimming flaps would have allowed it to move through the water in a series of undulating motions, similar to how a caterpillar moves. They were also covered in small appendages called seti, which likely helped the creature grip the seafloor. Number 2. Isotelus rex is an impressive specimen, estimated to have been about 28 inches or 70 centimeters long, making it one of the largest trilobites known to science. 
This is a tremendous size compared to the most other trilobite fossils that were found, which are usually only about a few inches or centimeters long. So when a discovery of the largest known trilobite fossil was made, it excited scientists to learn more about it. The fossil consists of a nearly complete dorsal shield. A dorsal shield is the protective covering that runs along the top of the body, and it was found at a site in Manitoba, Canada. Isotelus rex was likely a predator that hunted worms and other invertebrates on the seafloor. It's believed to have scuttled along the bottom of the ocean, utilizing a combination of its numerous legs and flexible body segments to easily locate its prey. Despite its size, Isotelus rex was well adapted to the ocean life. Its heavily armored exoskeleton provided protection against predators and also aided in regulating its buoyancy. And thanks to its many legs, it can move quickly and efficiently through the water. Number 1. Permanent Scorpius kirkdenensis is an extinct species of scorpion that lived during the early Carboniferous period, approximately 330 million years ago. This species is one of the largest scorpions ever discovered, with the largest known individual estimated to be over 28 inches or 70 centimeters long. Fossil remains of this killer scorpion were first found in the Kirkden Formation of Scotland. Surprisingly, this prehistoric scorpion had a soft tissue that was well preserved. This has allowed scientists to study the anatomy and behavior in greater detail compared to other fossils that have been found. Pulmonis scorpius kirkdenensis likely inhabited various aquatic and semi-aquatic environments, including rivers, lakes, and swamps. It was also a highly effective predator, using its sharp claws and venomous sting to capture prey. One of the most notable features of this scorpion is its ability to breathe air, making it one of the earliest known scorpions to have developed this adaptation. Which extinct insect would you like to see brought back to life? Let us know in those comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see more videos we've made, click one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.